the new IB chemistry syllabus, there are six focus area or themes. They are structure one, two, three, and reactivity one, two, three. Each theme is designed to provide a clear progression of ideas throughout the structure. And each theme is divided into several topics, which represent a broader conceptual area. The distinction between standard level and higher level content is not very clear through the topics. Therefore, if we want to see the content for the standard level and higher level, these topics should be divided into several subtopics. For example, structure 1.2. For structure 1.2.1 1 and 1.2.2 are for standard level. And additionally, structure 1.2.3 is for higher level. Let's go back to the theme one that is divided into five different topics. It covers structure of matter and the atomic particles and electron configuration to count particle by mass and understanding the behavior of gas and ideal gas model. The second themes focus on the type of bond, ionic, covalent, and metallic that influence the properties of materials. And the next theme, theme three, is divided into two different topics, classification of elements and functional group of organic compounds. And the theme four focus on the enthalpy change, energy cycles, energy from fuels, and the role of entropy in spontaneity. And theme five divided into three different topics, focusing on the rate of chemical reaction, the amount of reactant that is consumed, how fast the reaction is, is occurred, and also the completeness of a chemical reaction. And the last theme is divided into six, is divided into four different topics. We, they are proton transfer and electron transfer reaction, and also electron sharing and electron pair sharing reaction. This table can be found in the IB chemistry syllabus. As you can see, here is the content statement is the expectation for students to understand from these particular subtopics and outcomes learning and teaching. This one is the goal for students knowledge or skills by the end of this lesson and guidance on the coverage expected is the recommendation on content depth and linking questions. Here you can find or you can see one linking question, but it could be more than one for other subtopics. By the way, linking questions are questions connected between the current material with other topics to promote critical thinking and discussion. External assessment is together with internal assessment will decide your final IB grade up to 80%. The external assessment is exam that will be assessed at the end of your IB program. Either can be either May or November. And external assessment consists of two papers, paper one and two. The weight for both SL and HLR is the same, where paper one is 36% and paper two is 44%. Together, they make up 80%. The remaining 20% is coming from internal assessment. It's a scientific investigation that you could do either first or second year, depending on the timeline from your chemistry teacher. More detail about external assessment. The difference between standard level and higher level only about the times that is required to complete the both paper one and two and also the content, because as you know, higher level cover more content compared to standard level. But the system or type of question is the same. Both standard level and higher level students will have paper one and paper two. For paper one, it has two section. They are paper 1A and paper 1B. For paper 1A, it has 30 MCQs. The question could be any content from your two-year program, IB diploma. And of course, it's 30 marks. So one question is one mark. And paper 1B related to the database question and questions on experimental work. 
The type of question could be identifying the problems or giving solutions based on the data provided. It could be also identifying the variables like control, independent, dependent, also could identify errors, also interpret data or diagram or chart. Also, it could be evaluations or conclusion. And the entire paper will have 55 marks and it needs, it needs one hour and 30 minutes to complete. For paper two, related to the short answer question, it's a brief answer that you can directly answer the question. And extended response questions involve usually explanation and analysis that require longer and more detailed answer. And this paper needs one hour and 30 minutes to complete. And the entire paper too has 50 marks. As I said before, the difference only number of question and the times needed to complete both paper one and two. For higher level, it has 40 MCQs and the entire paper has 70 marks where paper 1B has 35 marks. And you should complete this paper within two hours. And for paper two, it has 90 marks and the time to complete this paper is two hours and 30 minutes. I forget to mention that paper 1A and 1B comes together as a one exam paper. It's not a separate paper. And for both paper one and two, for both SL and student, for both SL and high level students, allowed to use calculator and a clean chemistry data booklet will be also provided. This is how paper 1A looks like. It's a, like a normal MCQ questions with A, B, C, D option. And this is how paper 1B questions looks like. You need to know how to interpret the graph and to read the data from the graph. And another type of question is experiment is an experiment that familiar with you. Here you need to identify two control variables. And for paper two, as I mentioned before, it has two types of question, short answer question and extended response question. So this is a type of short answer question that you can answer directly or briefly. And this is the question that needs more explanation and need analysis for you to answer this question. Internal assessment is a scientific investigation where the outcome is a written lab report, not more than 3000 words and the hours required to do this uh, investigation is not less than 10 hours, but I believe that usually students need more 10 hours to complete this uh, internal assessment. And the counting for the words that it should be 3000 words, it's not included the charge diagram equation, formula, calculation, or citation or bibliography or any heaters. The difference between the rules of internal assessment this year and the, the previous IB chemistry syllabus that it has an option for students to work collaboratively in a group that can be organized by themselves, but not more than three members. Okay. But the outcomes, I mean, the lab report that will be written should be separated. It's, it's not a group lab report. So the lab report should be different. And how to do that? The student needs to formulate or design their own research question. So it should be unique and they need to develop the procedure to answer the research question. So the students can work on the same plan and helping each other when collecting the data, but needs to manipulate different things. For example, dependent variable could be the same, but independent variables should be different. For example, dependent variable is a rate of reaction of any particular chemical reaction. The independent variable is the factor that influenced the rate of chemical reaction. 
For example, one student investigate the influence of pressure, the other one temperature, and the other one is the concentration. Also, the students can choose different dependent variable, but the same independent variable. So because of this, or based on this, the students will have different data. And the written lab report will be externally moderated by the IB based on four criteria, research design, data analysis, conclusion, and evaluation, where each criteria will have maximum score of six and the total is 24. So how can you get that total score of 24 for your written lab report? We will talk about it in a different section of video that will talk specifically about internal assessment. For your IB final grade, for you to get that certificate, okay, you need minimum 24 points where at least three higher level subjects with a total point of 12. In case that you choose IB chemistry standard level, you need to get at least score of two, but we don't aim for you to get a score of two. We aim for you to get seven with the nail IB and follow the instruction very well. You should, and you have to get the score of seven. Here is the range of score for IB chemistry uh, grade for you to give an idea for the overall scope. Okay, the score of 73 here is the total of paper one, paper two, and internal assessment. You see here time zone one. It has two time zones for the May exam, time zone one and time zone two, and time zone zero for the November exam. For SL, you need to get 73 to get to get grade seven. And for the higher level, you need 76 to get grade seven. There is not much points difference between time zone one and time zone two. As you can see, for standard level, you need 72 for time zone two and 73 for time zone one. Only one point difference. The same with higher level. For time zone one, you need 76. And for time zone two, you need 77. And this boundaries or the score may vary from year to year but the difference the difference of points are not that much uh significant it could be one two or three maximum and the ib will decide the score particularly on the exam year within the time zone based on the student's performance all right we have talked about different themes from the new IB chemistry syllabus, external assessment with its weight and the examples of both paper one and two, the question, okay, the example of question for both paper one and two, also the internal assessment briefly and the great boundaries for the IB chemistry, okay? Next video, I'll be discussed about a road map for you to learn the subtopics. Remember, with the nail IB, you can achieve score of seven. See you in the next video.